Mary Magdalene can't come through right now. Okay. Um. She said, I am, I cannot. Okay. All right. Why? I'm not sure why, but she said, I cannot. Just a sec. Okay. Uh, let's do uh, Valentinus. Do you know Valentinus? No. Who is that? It's, uh, uh, he lived in the, around uh, 100 years after Christ. And he, he was uh, one of the alternative teachers of Christianity. Okay, very good. Valentinus. Valentinus. Yes. And after him, there is a Valentinian uh, uh, branch of Christianity. They still oh. exist. They still exist. They were persecuted, but they still exist. Okay. What was their big, what was their difference? What was the difference? Well, that's what I want to find out. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> Hold on. It is I, Valentinus. Uh, hello. Welcome. Greetings. And your name is? Max. Max. How are you? Interesting name. Very well. Um, I want to start with, with private questions, so I will put the recording on pause, and then we'll do go the, the public ones. I resume the recording. So um, how are you doing now? What, what, what's your activity now? What is my what? Activity. My activity is that I am learning many things in the universe. I am planning to come back to Earth at this time. I need to be at a certain point in your ascension to help with a God's uh, redis. Uh, rediscussion of who he is and his life and all these things. So after you left the body, uh, how much did, did your uh, view on God change? Did you, did you change your views on God? Uh, yes. I did eventually change my views. Right. Everyone does. When you are in the, the earthly body, you have certain perceptions that you cannot have uh, you cannot know truly and wisely what God is really like until after you leave the earthly realm and go to the oversoul. There are some perceptions and uh, facets of God that remain a mystery to you until you are able to really know what his personality is really like. We were under the impression that he was, of course, wise and intelligent, loving and kind, but we also thought that he had a very harsh side as well. Just like we have harsh sides, we thought his, his personality had a, also a harsh edge to it, but uh, we were wrong about that. At least I was because I was uh -huh. the one teaching. And of course, more judgment comes to the teacher if he teaches incorrectly. So, but the thing is, that's what I thought. But the judgment of God was about how much love and honor was spread and how much was learned about spirituality and how much fire of God was given and unconditional love and things of that compassion and feeding of the poor and good works and all these positive things 
which we didn't expect, or I did not expect him to be so positive. When I was on the earth in the third dimension, I was thinking that he would not be that willing to forgive some of the things that people were doing, prostitution and all these different things I thought were damnable and that he would send them off to a fiery exit. But I was wrong about that. He was, he's very forgiving. But is of it, course is you do have to pay some price, but he is not sending you to a fiery grave. What kind of price? Well, whenever someone has been very bad on this planet, they're, they have to go through a great amount of uh, teaching to learn what they've done wrong, to learn how to do it better next time. And they must review their lives many times because with those kinds of people, it seems like they're continuously making uh, some kind of an error. And all these errors must be pointed out and all these errors must be corrected and they must know about all these different things. So to go through a process when you are, have not been a good person is a very long process before you can actually take your place in the heavenly realms or the, the realms of the oversoul, as you call it. But um, some of these people take a long time to become citizens of heaven. So uh, I'm looking at people and I clearly see that they're doing the error over and over and everyone has their own typical set of errors and I, I see myself doing the same set the same error or over and over and over so so if I go and um, in the life review I learn how to fix it uh, I come back and it comes back again or how does it work it co it could come back again you will be tried again so you need to understand why it's an error and why it's uh, why you can't you shouldn't do it the thing is some of the errors that people try to fix are actually not so bad as they think they are they're they they're less important than the big errors such as hatred uh, murder uh, suicide those things are very, very difficult. Dark witchcraft yeah, and things of yeah. this nature. And hatred, hatred, hatred is the worst. Um, anything, anyone that is living with great hatred and anger uh, is probably in the greatest amount of trouble. Yeah, I see a lot of people who are self-destructive and... Uh... Um, depressed, constantly depressed. Yes. Uh, I guess I'm, I, I'm not. Depression yes. is not necessarily evil, but it can lead to very negative thoughts and very negative actions. So you better be careful. Depression in and of itself is not the bad part. The bad part is what you do with your depression. If you do not get out of it, and it becomes worse and worse, you become nasty, you become irritable, you start hurting people in one way or another, and that is when it gets dangerous. I see, uh, you know, I just learned about your, your branch of Christianity, and I, I, I really like it. I think uh, it is a great uh, misfortune that your branch didn't become more popular because it was much more uh, balanced, much more happy, much more oh, yes. spiritual. We, I, we had a closer understanding of Jesus' life as he truly was, I believe, because we were early. We were the early Christians that uh, heard the stories only a couple generations away from when he died. And so maybe three to four generations after he left and people were still strongly holding on to his uh, personality, his way of life, 
how he did things and greater detail to his um, his secular life, if you will, uh, along with his uh, godly life. He was truly theanthropic and truly a, a man that was human and God at all at once. And it was hard to appreciate that until you heard some of these wonderful human stories that he was also very human, but also very loving, good, and kind, and also very godly when it came to healings, when it came to giving of himself, when it came to understanding and being wise. He was truly godlike. But he did have very, very many things that he did that were very much like a man as well. Uh, so did you have personal experience uh, of your uh, knowledge of experience of God and Jesus? Yes, because we believe that he was still around in spirit and that the Holy Spirit, which he spoke of, was with us and that it was a help, a help to us and that the Holy Spirit could heal just as he did when he was on earth, could cause miracles just as he had done when he was on earth. So we did not have the man, but we had the spirit of the man after he left. Uh, was it the period, uh, the time when you lived, was it the time of miracles? Did you still have a lot of uh, miracles? There and still some, not like when he was alive. Um, I believe there were those that, uh, like all of his apostles, would go out and do their do miracles among the people also. We did not have as many, but with my people there were miracles, yes. We believed in these things, and as you believe strongly in these things, and in the name of Christ, you are able to do these powerful things, then they were able to be done with the trueness of heart, with the love, and the, the power of the Holy Spirit. So, yes. So the Gnostics uh, believe that uh, the God who created the, the humans is, is uh, Demiurge, is evil. And, uh, and it's a different God than the, the, main, uh, uh, the, the, the main one. And you thought that um, uh, it's also a different God, but it's a, a craftsman which is just less skilled. That's why the, the world is created so um, uh, unharmonious, not harmonious, so, so messed up. Yes. So when, when you the came, God that we believed in was truly perfect and truly the God of the universe and all. But remember, God created many other lesser deities and so although we did not worship these lesser deities we we did recognize that they exist existed and gave them credit where credit was due and if they did a bad job that is something we pointed out so when you came um when you came up uh, out of the body to the um, spiritual world, um, do you still see that uh, the humans were created by uh, lesser deities or by the main creator? No. What happens is this. God in his greatness created all these different species and beings. And some of them went against God's wishes. And some of them were very powerful beings. And they wanted to be God. They wanted to be God. And so therefore, they took the place of uh, God in some people's minds and some people's worlds and created a whole different kind of uh, relationship with the universe. And so God saw that that existed. But he also uses that to show how good he really is because with these negative actions and the opposite is so good, you appreciate it so much more.
So he was able to take whatever was created and use it for his own good. So uh, now you're with, with Yeshua in, in the spirit world. Are you talking to him? Of course. Uh, is he very different from, uh, from other uh, miracle workers which existed on earth? Is, I mean, well, he's... He does not, yes, in the sense that he does not uh, have a haughty attitude. Some of them had haughty, had haughty attitudes and wanted to be recognized. But uh, Jesus of Nazareth is very humble, but very powerful. You can see his energy just exuding from him when you meet him. However, he is unassuming when you speak to him. He is kind and generous and wise, but not negative in any way, and does not assume a high position, but yet he holds one. Uh, is Jesus and Krishna the same thing, he, just different incarnations of the same spirit? Similar. Krishna is more haughty in some ways. He's, he has an attitude, if you want to say that. But he, has, he is an aspect of God. He has just become a little full of himself. But he is a, a, a God-like being, yes. But is it the same spirit? It is a similar spirit, yes. But not, not the same but not the same. It's not the incarnation of the same soul. Not the incarnation of the same soul, no. I see. But it has aspects of the soul. I it see. has aspects of Jesus. Because whenever someone enters this realm and is going to do a job like Jesus did, they have to have aspects of many different uh many parts of God's personality. I see. Um, it's, it's not so, an easy concept to, to tell you that God has many sides to his personality, but, and some of them may seem not to be kind, but they are, and not to be loving, but they are. Uh, uh, but you, it's cruel to be kind, one of those kind of things. But God knows exactly how to use everything that he has to the greater good. So I just spoke to Logos um, a week ago, and it announced that it's coming back. The God yeah. is coming back, and he is already here. I assume incarnated, possibly. Yes. Can you share a little more about that? Well, um, what did you want to know about it? Are you coming all together? I am coming later than Logos, but Logos uh -huh. is all because all Logos is already being incarnated. He's in the womb at this time, so that's why he's still able to channel. I am still in spirit. I am not. I am not yet incarnated. Oh wow! Is Jesus coming too? Of course, but is he's the... already on your planet, and he is already. In his 20s. Ah. 20s? 21, actually. Oh, wow. As a man? He is a man. Ah. But not one that you would recognize as Jesus yet. Ah. No one would recognize him, but some have already. Oh, by the way, how does he look? Uh, we have um, a few stereotypical images of Jesus. Is any of them good? No. He's coming back with a totally different look this time. Oh, no, no. I'm asking about the past. Oh, the past? He yeah. was an olive-skinned man with longish hair and brown eyes. Um... Uh, he grew a beard, of course, because that's what the men did back then. It showed their manhood, etc. And um, I'm not sure all the reasons why they grew their beards and things, but um, 
it was a Jewish custom. Yeah, let me ask you the question uh, specifically. Uh, in our uh, imagery, if you look at our paintings, there is a very typical, prototypical uh, oh, face yes. of, 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 Most of Jesus. Most of them are wrong, yes. He did never have blue eyes. He was not a strong, muscular-looking person. He was rather thin and scrawny. He did not eat well because of traveling a lot, but uh, those that took him in did feed him well. But he was a thin man. He was uh, dark-skinned. He was not extremely good-looking, but he had a great deal of power. Um. Uh, look, look uh, can you Google uh, El Greco's? El Greco is a Spanish painter, and El Greco's yeah. Jesus. Oh, no, he uh, did not look like that, no. No. Gosh, it would be well, so nice I mean, to find. Uh, that is a, that is a, that's sort of close, but it's still wrong. How about, look at the uh, ancient Greek uh, icons of, uh, of Jesus. They look very Greek. Would it be any similar? Yeah, they looked too, much too Greek. He was Middle Eastern. All right. Okay, I guess, yeah. If, if you find a painting which looks like this. I will let you a... know because he was thin. He, he had a, some, a gaunt face. Um, but he was so kind. His eyes shone. You knew when you looked in his eyes, you were looking at somebody very special. Even though the rest of him... Did it look like much? I see. I see. Uh, now, um, his relationship with uh, with Mary Magdalene. Uh, there is a whole story, especially coming from your teaching, that it is uh, a unity which restores a balance between uh, balance and harmony between uh, a man and a woman. Yes, because they did they did unite, and they this was something that God wasn't really expecting. And he got a whole new view of love and uh, he got a different view of being a father, of being a, uh, he, he got a whole new sensation about humanity as a whole. Of course, he understood that there were, uh, what sexuality felt like to a point, but he was, and what love was mm -hmm. and different things, but he got a first hand look at it through uh, Mary and Jesus. Uh, so Valentinians were, um, gave a lot of um, respect to women and you had uh, women priests and women uh, participants yeah. and, and so on. So, <sighs> Uh, so, so if you look at Adam and Eve, right. when, when Eve was created, she was created from Adam's side. So he, she was equal to Adam. She was not uh, created from above him or below him, but beside him. And so we believe that that analogy, when he spoke about creating Eve, that she was to be equal to Adam. And that's where we feel that we were very positive in promoting women as teachers. We were very positive about promoting them as priests. And many of them were very, very good and very, very uh, helpful to the world. They were just awesome people. Uh, how seriously do you take the Adam Eve story? It doesn't look right from the biology point of oh view. no no it, it was all symbolic of course but um but we did take the symbolism in the right way i thought that we made it very equal we made it even though eve was the one that took uh was supposed to be the first one that disobeyed which made her secondary in some people's eyes we saw that as a mistake because Adam did the same thing. He, he was uh, actually following Eve when he took the apple. So he followed Eve into disobedience. 
So who is more equal, man or woman? Yeah, yeah. the Gnostics thought that uh, it was a good thing that they, uh, that they learned uh, about the greater God. It was the smaller God which was hiding the greater, the knowledge about the greater God from humans. And when humans ate the apple, they, uh, the fruit, they discovered there is a higher spiritual truth. The, eventually, yes. But the whole thing is very symbolic, yes. So all these symbolisms equal very, are about equality between men and women in the Garden of Eden. Um, and disobedience being the first sin is probably the first sin your, child, your children will commit as well. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, disobedience is a, a virtue. Yes. <laughs> um, so coming back to the plan of the uh, Yeshua coming back and uh, the Logos coming back and you coming back, can you help? This is a time yeah. of spiritual change on your planet. Uh -huh. There will be a couple that will speak before Jesus comes and they will make it clear what God wants to reveal, and then Jesus will come and be a part of that, and will be, it will be a different kind of life for Jesus this time, and you will see what I mean when it happens, because it's, it's not that far away. When, um, when she, 21, and by the time he's in his 30s, he will be uh, back preaching again. Wow. So when uh, he comes to other planets, uh, does he also do self-sacrifice? Is it typical for him? He doesn't have to this time. But is it, uh, is it a typical move for him? Is it his... Uh, self-sacrifice in a different way, yes, but not, not dying on a cross. He will not die this time in the same way. Right. His, uh, he, but he will show many spiritual sacrifices. I see. When I look at the history of Christianity, it looks like uh, there were many other teachings which were equally reforming, equally good reforming the, the old religion into the new understanding. So the reason that the Christianity became dominant was mostly because of the um, strange... Uh, politics and economy of Roman Empire. Yes, it all has to do with culture and uh, the cultures of the time mold religions in right. some ways. And it, it's hard to have a pure religion with the culture having to be part of it. You see, with, you have to mold the, the religion into the culture, otherwise it doesn't work. It was quite possible that Roman gods would be the dominant religion, or Greek gods, or uh, yes, uh, Mediterranean. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Assyrian gods or Indian gods. I mean, any of those could 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 create the world religion. Of course. So, I, I'm just wondering how different is is Yeshua from all other prophets? Is he uh, two steps higher, or is he the same level as as other prophets? He came at the right time. He was in the right place at the right time with the right message and the, everything was delivered the, exactly the way it should for it to continue in a way that changed the world. I mean, was it um, preset, predetermined that it would be his message that would become dominant or... Uh, it was equally pro probable that, you know, somebody else... It was equally message. probable that others might be, do the same, but he went out because of many different cultural changes and things of that nature. I'm being told that I have to stop now. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, it's so unfortunate we have to stop. It was a very useful, productive, and helpful conversation it clear clear clears up a lot of questions oh very thank you well. very much very good yeah.
let's reconnect more because I, I really like your branch of religion. I think you are a great teacher and it's very unfortunate uh, that you, your branch didn't become the, the main one. I see. Very well, and I, I agree with you to some extent. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Blessings to all. Blessings. Hello? Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hi. The time is 11.07. Okay. All right, I will let you go. Thank you much. I have, uh, yeah, I have one in about 20 minutes. We skip the next one, right? Oh, I don't remember. Today is what? No, we still have the next one, right? Yes, uh, there's still one more, yeah.